I've been given um, 2 um, Corinthians 2, and I wanted to read the message um, to you because the message uh, seems to me just really says it much better um, and puts it into perspective for me. So I'm going to read that and then just kind of explain points. So um, that's why I decided to make another visit that could only be painful to both of us. If by merely showing up, I would put you in an embarrassing, painful position, how would you then be free to cheer and refresh me? That was my reason for writing a letter instead of coming, so I wouldn't have to spend a miserable time disappointing the very friends I had looked forward to cheering me up. I was convinced at the time I wrote it that what was best for me was also best for you. As it turned out, there was pain enough just in writing that letter, more tears than ink on the parchment. But I didn't write it to cause pain. I wrote it so you would know how much I care, or oh, more than care, love you. And that reminded me of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because um, he loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And in John 3, 16, which you guys all know this verse, um, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he gave, even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And, you know, that reminded me of that because Paul loved those people so much, but God loved us so much. And when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane in um, Luke 22, um, he talks about how um, he's just wrenching, you know, because He's, I mean, he's, he knows he loves us so much that he's got to go to the cross, but yet he knows what he has to do to do that. And for the love of, you know, towards us, Paul loved those people so much and wanted them to follow Christ so bad that he didn't want to go and just again, and he was literally um, crying in this in the human nature of what we can do for people and um, that's what I saw in that picture was that you know was Christ and so the next part of it now now regarding the one who started all this the person in question who caused all this pain I want you to know that I am not the one injured in this as much as, with a few exceptions, all of you. So I don't want to come down too hard. What the majority of you agree to as punishment is punishment enough. Now is the time to forgive this man and help him back on his feet. If all you do is pour on the guilt, you could very well drown him in it. My counsel now is to pour on the love. The focus of my letter wasn't on punishing the fender, but I'm getting you to take responsibility for the health of the church. Paul is teaching here. Um, we all have people in our lives that um, can offend us or whatever and do things that are wrong. And um, this reminds me of, you know, I mean, he wants you to, he wants love to come out and, um, uh, so, I'm sorry, I just meant I lost my notes. He wants the health of the church, and he wants them to love, and he wants them to be healthy, and um, because that's why, I mean, when I first read this, I was a little confused. I mean, because if you don't know the history, and of course, Pastor has, on Sunday, has given us history on this, so, um, but I also got my expositories out. And went over those but when he you know in first corinthians i mean he came and he told the church what they were doing and um they needed to follow christ and so um this is what in colossians first 10 um and 1 10 through 11 is the best way it says it it says 
so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, displaying admiral character, moral courage, and personal integrity, to fully please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing in the knowledge of God, with deeper faith, clear insight, and firm love for his precepts. We pray that you may be strengthened and invigorated with all power, according to his glorious might, to attain every kind of endurance and patience with joy. He wanted them to be the church, and he wanted them to be, to have that character and to have the character of God. And that's why he was asking them to love, to love. So, um, and that's the most important thing in life is we need to love. So the last part of this, so if you forgive, I forgive him. Don't think I'm carrying around a list of personal grudges. The fact is that I'm joining in with your forgiveness as Christ is with us, guiding us. After all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We're not oblivious to his sly ways. When I arrived in Tauros to proclaim the message of the Messiah, I found the place wide open. God had opened the door. All I had to do was walk through it. But when I did not find Titus waiting for me with news of your condition, I couldn't relax. Worried about you, I left and came on to Macedonia's province looking for Titus and a reassuring word on you. And I got it. Thank God. So forgiveness. He wanted forgiveness and he wanted to make sure that they were okay. And in Matthew 18, 21 through 23, it says, Then Peter came to him and ask, Lord, how many times will my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? Up to seven times? Jesus answered him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Luke 17, three through four says, pay attention and always be on guard, looking out for one another. If your brother sins and disregards God's precepts, solemnly warn him. And if he repents and changes, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. That is, give up resentment and consider the offense recalled and annulled. I'm going to share a quick testimony with you that years ago, I was in a business and there was a gentleman that um, I worked with and he um, was taking some business away from me and I went to him and I talked to him about it and he wasn't going to change what was happening. And I was very, very angry. I really disliked, I, I at that time I could say I hated the person. And the Lord told me I needed to go to him and, for, and ask for forgiveness. And um, I didn't want to do that. I did not want to... He wasn't going to change his mind. He was taking money out of my pocket. Um, I wasn't going to do that. And I, but I did. Um, the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit. He's our advocate, our counselor. Um, he um, was on me. I could just, it was so strong that I knew I needed to do this. I'm not saying it was easy. I went kicking and screaming, basically. Um, did not want to do it, but I did. And as soon as I did it, God filled me with agape love for this man. <laughs> Literally filled my heart. I couldn't love him naturally in that way ever. And he taught me such a valuable lesson that we need to do and be what the word says and be Christ-like. And that's what Paul wanted for the church. And he wanted him to be a healthy church. So I hope this has been um, a good lesson for you guys. And I'm done. Amen. <laughs>